विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज अ ऑब्लिगेटरी क्राइटेरिया फॉर डायग्नोस ऑफ एलर्जिक ब्रॉन्कोपलमोनरी एस्पेजिलोसिस सो एलर्जिक ब्रॉन्कोपलमोनरी एस्पेजिलोसिस हैज वी करंटली फॉलो वट इज नोन एज ईशाम क्राइटेरिया सो इन दैट there is a predisposing condition should be present the patient should have an obligatory criteria plus patient should have the other supportive criteria so we will look into that okay let us look at the options first serum ige levels more than 100 nanograms per ml precipitating antibodies against aspergillus fumigatus aspergillus skin test positivity or increased ige against aspergillus fumigatus okay now let me take you through allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis for next few minutes Allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis is a peculiar form of allergic reaction to Aspergillus fumigatus. Species is important. It is Aspergillus fumigatus. This is typically seen in patients with asthma, cystic fibrosis, and then sometimes chronic granulomatous disease. Right. So it is otherwise not seen in other individuals. You don't see COPD patients presenting with allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. And how does it present? It presents in the form of difficult to treat. asthma that's the most common scenario we suspect allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis in a patient who's asthma which was like kind of well controlled and suddenly it is lost control and we are struggling to get the asthma symptoms under control despite escalating medication we are unable to achieve that we we'll start thinking of allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis as one of the important differential diagnosis but in india for such a scenario i think the first differential is again the compliance to medication but once that is fixed we will be thinking of allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis Okay, now if ABPA is chronically present, patients might develop bronchiectasis. The bronchiectasis that we see in ABPA patients are usually cylindrical. You know, you know the bronchiectasis is classified into cylindrical, fusiform, and cystic. So here we see cylindric bronchiectasis, and this cylindric bronchiectasis is located more proximally. That means towards the hilum, and mostly it is affecting the upper lobes. So towards the hilum, towards the upper lobes, cylindrical in nature. So what is cylindrical? The bronchial tree is dilated. but it is still maintaining the parallel structures so that means it looks like a cylinder right so when it is fusiform it would look like this and when it is cystic it would look like this right okay now if you are suspecting how do you further evaluate imaging is very very important even it is part of the isham criteria for diagnosis right so you might do a chest x ray even when an asthma patient is not responding to medications an intercurrent infection is also considered as one of the important differential and you would have done the imaging right so on chest x ray if patient is suffering from allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis what are we going to see we will be seeing two findings okay now in abpa you would notice that there is a increased tendency to develop or secrete hyperviscous secretions or mucus right hyperviscous mucus production okay so because of this this mucus tends to precipitate and settle in the airway so this deposition of mucus in the airway can give rise to some peculiar finding so one that we are seeing in this image can you trace the outline of whatever i am tracing can you notice it doesn't it look like your fingers are in a glove yeah this is what is known as glove finger sign right this is known as glove finger sign or finger in glove sign glove finger sign okay this sign is because of this deposition of the thick viscid mucus into the airway right we call it as glove finger sign so the bronchial tree looks like as if the fingers are placed in a glove this is one finding right the directly they might ask you in mcq where do you see glove finger sign it is seen in allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis it is not seen in invasive aspergillosis please remember that it's not seen in chronic pulmonary aspergillosis or not in aspergilloma it is seen in allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis okay the next finding we would see is fleeting pulmonary opacities fleeting pulmonary opacities that is the second finding that we would be seeing in patients with abpa so you might see that when you are doing an x ray some infiltrates appear in some part of the lung and during the subsequent follow up x rays these infiltrates are changing its location because these infiltrates are per se because of the deposition of thick viscid mucus now if the local clearance mechanism clear of that viscid mucus collection and mucus deposition occurs in other other locations then infiltrates will appear in that location that's what explains why we see these fleeting pulmonary opacities i think you can make out that from this image so you can notice the infiltrates here then infiltrate has now become a little more peripheral subsequent extra infiltrate has become more towards the hilum right eventually it has again become more towards the periphery disappears for some time then again becomes more towards the hilum so these pulmonary infiltrates are changing its locations this is what we call as fleeting pulmonary opacities so in a patient who is known to be asthmatic or known to be having cystic fibrosis the two important predisposing conditions if they present with 
uh, difficult to treat underlying disease, particularly in asthma, right? difficult to control asthma symptoms. And in the x-ray, when you are following a serial uh, imaging is done, you will notice that these infiltrates are appearing and disappearing. Then that is again a strong, that is a point to arise, I mean, arouse a strong suspicion of your allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, right? Okay. So those are the imaging findings. Now, finally, how do we diagnose? We currently follow this ESHAM criteria. ESHAM stands for International Society for Human and Animal Mycology. They keep giving out guidelines for management of various fungal infections, including like for recent times, they had issued their guidelines for management of mucomycosis, the diagnosis of mucomycosis during this COVID pandemic. So this ESHAM criteria has become the most accepted criteria for diagnosis of ABPA. We did have this thing called as Rosenberg and Patterson criteria, but it's not followed anymore. Okay. So according to ESHAM criteria, there are three things. Patient should have a predisposing condition, which is mandatory. A predisposing condition is one of them should be mandatory. It should be there. Without that presence, you cannot diagnose ABPA. What are those predisposing conditions? Asthma and cystic fibrosis. One of them should be there. Okay. In rare circumstances, chronic granulomatous disease can also present with ABPA. But please remember, CGD is very rare, right? So this guidelines are kind of simplification. Now, once you have an asthma or cystic fibrosis then patient should have at least, I mean, patient should have all of these obligatory criteria. They are obligatory, mandatory, patient should have these criteria. What are those? Aspergillus skin test should be positive. So, skin test should be positive for hypersensitivity to aspergillus. Or if the skin test is not what you are doing, or the patient should have IgE, which is elevated against the specific aspergillus species, that is aspergillus fumigatus species. It should be Ig levels should be elevated against. So I, I don't mean that overall Ig levels. That is anyway part of the criteria. In addition to overall Ig elevation, Ig specifically directed against Aspergillus fumigatus should be elevated. Okay. And the total Ig levels should be more than thousand nanograms per ml. So both of these criteria should be present. Two of these two criteria should be present. And then we have the other criteria where two of the two two of the three criteria should be present. What are these? Three criteria: precipitating antibodies against Aspergillus fumigatus. That is one. Radiography suggestive of allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. What is the radiography findings we just discussed? Discussed gloved finger sign, right? And your fleeting pulmonary opacities, right? And then the total eosinophil count more than 500 cells per cubic millimeter. Two out of these three should be there. Two out of these two should be there, and one out of this one should be there. So one out of, I mean, one out of two predisposing conditions should be there, all the obligatory criteria should be there and from the other criteria, at least two out of the three should be there to diagnose it with reasonable confidence as allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Okay. So please again pay attention. The skin test is obligatory criteria. IgE specifically directed against A fumigatus is obligatory criteria. Total serum IgE levels 1000 plus is an obligatory criteria. If it is not more than 1000, but rest of the criteria are kind of meeting, right? Then we call it as severe asthma with fungal sensitization. So the difference between ABPA and SAPS is your IgE levels. IgE levels in SAPS are less than 1000 nanograms per ml and they are more than 1000 nanograms per ml in case of ABPA, right? So that's about obligatory criteria. And the other criteria, please look at that. Precipitating antibodies are other criteria. Your snowfill count is other criteria, right? Okay. So going back to the question, now what do we see in the question? Serum Ig levels more than 1000 nanograms per ml. True. It is, it is one of the obligatory criteria. True statement, right? Precipitating antibodies against Aspergillus fumigatus. This is false. This is a other criteria, right? This is other criteria. Aspergillus skin test positive. That is true. That's a obligatory criteria and increase Ig against Aspergillus fumigatus, specifically against Aspergillus fumigatus is obligatory criteria. So right answer for this question is option B.